we've talked about uh, DeFi and some of the changes going on in, in blockchain and crypto, the latest developments and iterations. Um, this is leading into another article that we have about the future of DeFi with Bank of America. <clears throat> Actually, we've got a couple articles because it's really about how um, real world assets, tokenization of real world assets is being moved on to blockchain and decentralized finance, really, whether it's uh, a synthetic asset that's mirroring something, um, you know, in the stock market, or whether it is, they're talking about real estate and um, titles, titles. Uh, yep. being able to or take even it ID, to a, tokenized ID. Taking that and putting it on chain so that people can know it's not counterfeited. This represents one for one what it is. And now you can take that value. You can use it for, for uh, collateral. You can exchange it directly with, with another. And that's what we're talking about. We're talking about the future of DeFi and tokenization right. and how it's being used. So that is it's the... Definitely well, that's it's definitely the kind of use case that is uh, people are talking about when they say, you know, what's going to make, what's going to bring us to the next step in crypto adoption? Well, it's it's use, having uses for it, right? And and finding ways to add efficiency in in re avenues of of traditional, you know, um, traditional finance or or real estate or whatever the the, the place is, and 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 bringing efficiency, streamlining it. And um, you know, set, helping things to be, be a lot easier, right? Whether it's settlement or settlement wait times, or detecting fraud, fraud or counterfeit uh, titles or whatever. Th this kind of um, it streamlines a lot of those things that that are today done by what well, notaries and insurance companies and things that are and then and they get paid quite well. So to automate it and to get rid of that trust counterparty risk thing. And, you know, that's, that's, that's real innovation. And, you know, it, it's also a great place for where regulators could focus and, and on the industry on finding ways for these traditional intermediaries, the Goldman Sachs, the JP Morgan's find ways to help them take their, their books and, and tokenize these assets that they have and bring them onto chain, those, those bridges, not in the low, small, experimental world of what's called DeFi and blockchain now, in, right. trying to find ways to wrap assets from one chain to another and then create ways to of interoperability in these um, automated market makers by code. That's, that's I, I think such a small niche area that that the the market cap the idea is, is so tiny really where you could use the help are in these mainstream institutions bringing them on board on to the blockchain so that they can interact with the speed the finality and take and take their um assets and move it well that's kind of what this article is all, actually yeah that's exactly what this article is all about why goldman sachs okay is still bullish on digital assets. And what we're saying here is that we talked about, you know, uh, some articles saying the future is going to be, um, well, uh, digital tokenization and, and putting real world assets on chain. And that's exactly what Goldman Sachs has already done. Uh, they've taken their own private blockchain. <clears throat> here we go. Mm -hmm. The Goldman Sachs, uh, DAP tokenization platform um, has uh, now sold $102 million worth of tokenized green bonds. So they have already started using blockchain technology for all the reasons why everyone else has been raving about blockchain for a long time. You don't take several days to uh, have finality and settlement. They are able to change it from what used to take five days somewhere in the article. It mentions you what used it. to take. You scroll back up. Did I have it? it right there? Oh, from five days to the same day. There you go. Boom. Yep. Right in that same article. So, um, you know, that's what we're saying. We're, we're saying that without the 
the needs before in the old economy, if we look at the old financial system, the old economy for years, for generations, if you wanted to, to cash out on, on bonds on a hundred million dollars worth of bonds, you're talking about something that would take several days in order for you to uh, achieve, you know, settlement. Now, yeah using blockchain they're offering services saying we will come bank with us come bank with us come use our protocol which is by the way come to DeFi, you get instant come to blockchain come to bitcoin you can send something from a wallet instantaneously and achieve you know finality settlement within seconds or minutes depending how busy the chain is so it's yeah it's a big interesting big step it's beautiful. It's interesting. It's wonderful. It's ironic. You know, a lot of these companies, Goldman Sachs or JP Morgan were uh, years ago saying, all oh, this is junk. And now you did have some people saying, no, Bitcoin is junk. Blockchain is good, but that's, yeah. that's comp competition, right? You know, you use, use our chain for settlement and not these theirs. other, <laughs> not, these other blockchains are not. Um uh, <clears throat> And I have uh, one more article to add to that. Um, 2023 will be the year of crypto token price divergence Bank of America. So Goldman Sachs is taking real world assets. They're already using blockchain technology. You know, I mean, that's why we do these videos to keep hammering home the point. Yes, right now the market may be going through the doldrums. Interest rates are getting higher. The quiz getting, but look at the big picture. The big picture. Goldman Sachs is now tokenizing real world assets and and offering blockchain services to their clients. Um, we're, we're seeing that that uh, other article we showed about that 2023 is going to be taking blockchain and marrying it to real world assets tokenization. And of course, now we've got this Bank of America, which is one of the larger financial institutions in the world. And they're saying that expect a crypto token price divergence. Now, they're not talking about a divergence from the macro economy, which we, we like to talk about the connection and why it's important to understand these flows together. What are they talking about? What 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 crypto price yeah. divergence are they referring to? They're they're talking about smart uh, contract blockchain platforms, the the layer ones themselves, I assume, uh, uh, outperforming meme coins and governance tokens. Right. So, governance uh, meme coins, obviously, you know, they're not gonna, they're they're mostly hype and hopium. There's a roadmap. They're very, very easily considered be, be considered securities, right? They're not, hardly ever decentralized. Uh, governance tokens, um, they you probably they also are, consider them securities. Governance yeah, tokens, that's in what many I was ways. Say, you know, they're used to kind of uh, help steer a common enterprise. They are usually rewards for staking, right? And so, and, yeah, I can see how that would be the case. So there could be this and, divergence they see. And to what you were saying. Uh, smart contract and platforms are layer ones. I mean, that's what we're saying. When you look at the market cap, Ethereum, that's a layer one smart contract platform. Uh, BNB yeah. as well. Um, Polygon, it's a layer two, but it's still a, a platform for building applications. Solana, Polkadot, Avalanche, Avalanche. Cosmos, Atom. Yep. So, I mean, really what we're talking about is we're talking about the, the the real value to blockchain are those roadways are those the infrastructure we're talking about the infrastructure yeah. they're saying it's the infrastructure that's going to be real valuable moving forward after regulation after the shakeout a lot of that those 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 junk um pump and dump investments are going to be seen for what they are but when it comes to those those layer one protocols that that the Goldman Sachs are using to wrap their tokens and to send something that those layer ones are going to be the value in the yeah. future. I mean, that's, and I think that's a, probably a strong, strong point. That makes sense. And I think regulation could be a big driver of that it, just as much as basic economic laws that suggest totally. that those pipelines and infrastructures are valuable. Well, we talk about the macro, we talk about regulation, and we talk about the latest developments in blockchain and crypto. So hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and stay up to date of the latest and greatest. If you like to hear that from us, we will like to share that with you. Dig it.
Hope you enjoyed that clip. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscription, notification bell if you want to get the latest drops. Of course, all of this is educational entertainment information to help you in your journey, learning more about blockchain and how to participate. None of this is financial advice, investment advice. However, if you'd like to learn more about blockchain and crypto, we've got plenty of videos and playlists as well that walk you through DeFi tutorials, how to get involved. And if you'd like some more one-on-one -on -one help, check out our website, wisebeyondbitcoin.com. We've got plenty of free sources, resources for you to scroll through and check out in your journey, your blockchain crypto journey. Of course, you can also drop us a line. Let us know what you'd like to learn about. Time is money. Knowledge is power. Benefit from our experience. Let us know what you'd like to learn more about. We'd be happy to help you. Until the next time, have a beautiful day. Namaste, y'all.